head bowed and every eye closed. Lord, our desire, not just this year, but each and every day, is to offer you true, genuine praise. Not just from our lips, but from our very hearts. I pray now that Ricky might die, that Christ might speak, hide me behind the cross. And may the words be heard, be the words of a risen Savior, who offers both spirit and life everlasting. What is in his name and for his sake that we pray. Amen. Well, welcome to the virtual worship of First Baptist Church West today. And how glad we are that you have taken time to tune in to our worship service today. This Sunday, we are approaching the Martin Luther King Holiday Monday. This Monday is Martin Luther King's Holiday, the 15th, the third Monday of the month. And as we say, it's not a day off, it's a day on. So I trust, pray, and hope that as you remember the contributions in the life of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, you will honor his legacy by selecting a service project, spending time in prayer and reflecting, and thinking about what you might be able to do to be the drum major in your community as we honor a true American hero and a prince of preachers, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Well, today I want to lift up a word that is found in the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Then the tempter approached him and said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. But he answered, It is written, Man must not live by bread alone but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. I want to preach just for a little while today as God shall guide from this subject, keeping our priorities straight. Keeping our priorities straight. The challenge in every new year, with every new opportunity, and with life itself, is to get our priorities right to line our goals and our aspirations and labor in a direction that helps us to live <coughs> a life of fulfillment. Our priorities always reflect our choices, the things that we will do as opposed to the things that we will not do in the face of competing opinions. There are many things that can affect our priorities. Time is always a consideration because we only have so much of it and it is always limited. We can never do all that we want to do because it's not possible for us to be in two places at one time. Looking back, I wished I would have spent more time with family in Lauren's developmental years. Her connection to her cousins and extended family are not like mine because she did not spend time with them as I did in my generation with each of my cousins. Then I, then I wished I would have spent more time just being her dad, knowing the joy a child could bring. I once remember hearing my godmother say to me that when they are young, they're on your lap, and when they become older, they're on your heart, and they're always a lot lighter on your lap than they are your heart. I tell parents with young ones to spend as much time as you can and make time because they grow up quickly. Time always impacts our priorities. Circumstances impact our priorities. It seems that there's always something happening that demands an adjustment in life. Sickness, loss, sudden change, a new pressing demand can all impact our priorities. 
Just as Theodore Roosevelt was starting his political career as a state politician in New York, he lost his wife after the birth of their first child and his mother on the same day. Suddenly, he was a widow with a young daughter while also mourning the loss of his mother. Politics was no longer the most pressing thing on his mind. Our priorities can be impacted by outside forces that would make us question who we are and what we are to do. The great chasm between Booker T. Washington and W.E.B. Du Bois was on the issue of priorities for the black community in the last half of the 19th century and the first half of the 20th century. Washington, through his work at Tuskegee, encouraged a focus upon trades, and that great speech in Atlanta, let down your buckets where you are. Land ownership and compromise with Jim Crow, he believed in time, would provide full citizenship and equal rights that could be won based upon the strength of the Negro's character. Du Bois agreed, disagreed, and he encouraged education and resistance and the development of the talented tenth, a concept that helped through education, helped that through education and skills, a select group of those persons would go back to their communities and provide the leadership needed to lift the masses. Fraternities and the sororities that we celebrate in our communities today have a direct line from Du Bois's talented tenth. Du Bois believed that Jim Crow should be resisted, not aided by compromise. It was between these two axes that African Americans had to decide what it meant to be black in America and how they would respond. Outside forces can impact our priorities. Yet the biggest impact upon our priorities is temptation. Those things that come to us and themselves that are not evil nor bad, but make us decide how important one thing may be over another thing that we need as well. Jesus started his ministry with baptism and was immediately led into the wilderness for a time of prayer and fasting. This was clearly a time for preparation of the work that he would do once he left the wilderness. Alone with God and away from the distractions of life, his spirit was clear and his heart open to hear how God planned to use him. For 40 days, he spent alone with God. For 40 days, he had been without food and no indication that he had water as well. For 40 days, his focus has not been upon himself or his need, but on the meaning of ministry and the work that he had been sent to do. At the end of the 40 days, the devil came to him to tempt him. And where it's true that God knows where to find us, so too does the tempter. In a moment of weakness, at a time when he is famished, the tempter makes an offer to Jesus, turn these stones to bread, alter your priorities. Go ahead and put yourself first for once. Demonstrate your power, prove you are who you say you are. If you are the son of God, command these stones to be turned into bread. Jesus responds to the tempter with a word that is just as important for us today as it was when first spoken to the tempter. Man does not live by bread alone. What is Jesus telling us about how to keep our priorities straight? Well, first Jesus is telling us just because we need something, it does not mean we need something else more. Jesus is practicing discernment, the ability to determine what is better between opposing choices. Jesus does not deny the value or the importance of food. Food has a rightful place in life to maintain health and provide our bodies the energy they need. But Jesus is challenging the idea of becoming a slave to food, where we allow food to determine everything in life that is important to us. 
Jesus is objecting to becoming a slave to food where we will do anything to get it, including using power in ways it was never intended. Being a slave to food means placing your natural desires and hunger to feed your appetite over every other consideration in life. When we become a slave to our appetites, then our appetites can become a weapon to punish some and reward others. When we allow food to become a weapon, we lose our humanity as well as our willingness to trust God because we think the only way we can get food is by our own power. Jesus says no to the tempter's offer and says as important as food may be, there are some things that are more important than food. God's word is more important. God's promise is more important. God's provision is more important. Man does not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus is placing his trust in God to provide what he needs when he needs it most. The tempter does not get the schedule dinner time because Jesus believes God will provide. Just because we need something, it does not mean we need something else more. In order to keep our priorities straight, we need the gift of discernment that comes through prayer and study and time alone with God. Jesus is able to turn back the temptation before him through means that are available to you and me. No matter what comes our way, there is nothing that we need more than God's promise and God's provision and God's promise. Not by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. But secondly, Jesus is telling us just because we have the power to do something does not mean that we should use the power for the things we're asked to do. Mm, mm, mm. Now, there's no question that Jesus has the power to turn the stones to bread. There will be later occasions where we will see his power at work, feeding the multitude, healing the sick, performing miracles of all kind. However, the fundamental question for persons with power is who determines how they use it and who will benefit from its use. The tempter is seeking to be the person who determines when and how Jesus uses his power. What is so cruel about this text is that Satan is attempting to use God's power for his purposes. Come on, Jesus. Turn these stones to bread. Use, use your power to save yourself. Jesus would hear those words again as he hung on the cross dying for you and me. But the issue had been resolved in the wilderness years earlier. When they mocked him and said to him, you have saved others, save yourself. If you come down from the cross, then we will believe But Jesus will not give in to the temptation of having others to determine how he uses his power and when he uses it. Jesus will not give in to the devil determining how he will use his power. We should be careful of those who would ask us to use our powers in ways that are questionable. We should be careful of the temptation that can rise up in us to prove to others that we have power. We should be careful of being tempted to use our power to advance our own position, sometimes at the expense of others. Just because we have the power to do something does not mean that we should use the power for the thing that we're asked to do. Jesus says no, because his power is reserved for a greater good. There's no need for him to make a spectacle there's no need for him to prove a point. Now is the time to remember why he has the power. 
He has the power not to prove something to the devil. He has the power to bring salvation to a lost world. He has the power to show God's love and God's faithfulness to the world. He has the power to prove that death does not have the last word. Jesus is willing to trust that God will reveal to him the time to use the power and not the tempter. Jesus keeps his priorities straight by saying no to the use of power in ways that God never intended. Just because you have the power to do something does not mean that you should use that power for what you are asked to do. But finally, just because our devotion time is over does not mean that we stop listening for God. You see, Jesus is not confused about who has appeared to him. He's not a concerned citizen worried about his welfare because he's been in the wilderness too long. He's not an angel from heaven with plans for how he is to be fed. It's the devil, and Jesus knew it. Jesus also knows that whenever the devil appears, he does not mean us good. He's a thief and a murderer and a liar. He is the accuser of the Lord's people. He is Beelzebub, the wicked one. In order to keep our priorities straight, we have to know who we are dealing with in moments of decision. Because Jesus knows who he's dealing with. He does not debate with him. He does not negotiate with him. He does not seek to change him. He just spoke the truth to him. Man does not live by bread alone. The truth was enough to put the matter to rest. And Jesus was able to speak the truth because he was still in communion with God. Communion with God should not end with the benediction. When the prayers are over, when the Bible is closed, communion with God should be our constant state. The old folk used to sing, I know that he walks with me and talks with me and tells me that I am his own. Jesus was still listening to God even after the time of prayer and fasting had ended and he could hear his father's voice leading him to refuse the devil's offer and to trust God. We serve a God that has promised to be with us always, even to the end of the age. We serve a God that neither sleeps nor slumbers. We serve a God that is able to keep us and provide for us and to make ways for us. We serve a God that will strengthen us in moments of weakness. We serve a God who is faithful and will bless us to be faithful to him when we listen to him. So take away your offer, Satan, because man does not live by prayer alone. I trust God to keep my priorities straight. And may God bless us that our priorities are always correct because we keep him first. Man does not live by bread alone. Let's pray. Father, we live in a world where we're surrounded by temptation on every end. How we need you to give us discernment in those moments of testing. How we need you to be close where we can hear your voice and see your face how we need you. So stay close by our side. Draw us ever nearer to you and grant us what we need that we might pass the time of temptation and testing even as our Lord did. In his name we pray and for his sake we ask it. 
。阿门。Well, my friends, thank you for joining us in our virtual worship at First Baptist Church West today. I trust, pray, and hope that this word was both challenging and inspiring, and that even when you walk away from the computer, you will still be in communion with God. May His Spirit be with you throughout this day and throughout the days to come, as we embark further into 2024. May you have a strong awareness of God's presence and a peace. It passes human understanding. He's promised to be with you always, so trust him. Put your hand in God's hand and let him lead you. What、well, we love to hear from you. Please write me, R. Woods at fbcwest.org, or call us at 704-372-1075. We want to know if our services are making a difference and being a blessing to you. As always, we encourage you to give and support. If you are led by the Lord to do so, know that your gifts will make a difference in the lives of others as we're doing the work of kingdom building. My time is up. I pray that God might bless you, keep you, and always be with you. Have a great, wonderful, and blessed week.